Thank you, sir. Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, Bansi is missing. I, I need to thank Bansi for inviting me here. Uh, oh, there you are. Your, your conference is going from strength to strength, man. I'm, I'm really impressed. So congratulations to you. You've heard about the heart. You've heard, heard about lipids. You heard about leptin. I'll bring you down to earth. We are all clinicians, man. So let's talk about clinical issues. Let's talk about the kidney. So this uh, speech is uh, basically sponsored by BI, but I'll try my best. Those of you who know me, who will know that I will give you my personal opinions, which are at times controversial. When you manage type 2 diabetes, you manage type 2 diabetes for so many reasons. So if a patient comes to you tomorrow and you write an anti-hyperglycemic agent, then you're not doing justice to the patient. We knew about the microvascular and macrovascular complications, which you see on the left-hand slide in the blue, but the emerging complications, if you look on the right-hand side, we forget about depression, we forget about sexual dysfunction, as ma'am just now mentioned, we forget about cognitive dis disability. So if you want to see a patient with diabetes properly, it will take you half an hour. I don't know how many of you could spend half an hour with your patient. We are all very busy clinicians. 50 marriage dekhna hai, drug likhna hai. Anyway, <laughs> let's try, let's try our best to serve the patients. So today's focus on the extreme top left, if you see, diabetic kidney disease. So I'm going to talk about diabetic kidney disease. What is the definition, consequences, and screen for CKD? CKD is a definition which is which good for textbook, for Harrison. It's defined as abnormalities of kidney structure functions, present for more than three months, implication for health. Doesn't make sense to you and me. What makes sense to you and me is this. How do you classify CKD? Now, if you go and check your clinic tomorrow, you'll be surprised how many of your patients have got CKD. CKD is EGFR less than 60 for more than three months and or ACR more than 30 micrograms per, millig per milligram for more than three months. If you screen your patients, you'll be surprised that as many as 30 to 40 percent of the patients you're seeing day in, day out have got CKD. The reason we don't pick it up is our concept of CKD is, you know, patient is bloated, anemic, short of breath, creatinine is three, but that's not the definition of CKD. And at the very end, I'll show you why it is very important to catch the patients early, because you can make difference. Why do you need to manage them? Because if you have no diabetes, no CKD, your cardiovascular mortality is 3.4%. Look at the extreme right, if you have CKD and type 2 diabetes, your cardiovascular mortality is 20%. A person with CKD does not die a renal death. So all these trials that I'll discuss, there will be a problem called renal death. They don't die of dialysis or cardiac renal death. They all have a... I won't say all, majority of them have a cardiac death. So, so this is how there's a heat map. The lower the EGFR and higher the ACR. Terminologies have changed. We don't say microalbuminuria and macroalbuminuria anymore. We say A1, A2, A3, because even at A1, once your ACR is more than five micrograms per milligram, your risk of mortality is going up. 30 is just a cutoff we have made. Even five and above is significant. So that's why it's A1. Even if you have no microalbuminuria, microalbuminuria below 30, even that is A1. A2 is moderate, three, what you usually know is microalbuminuria, and then you go down the GFR. This is available everywhere. This is a heat map you will see 100 times if you go to any CKD meeting. How do you screen? I think many of us are still guilty of writing serum creatinine in our prescriptions. Please don't. From tomorrow, please change your practice after this talk. Just write EGFR. CKD EPI formula you use, don't write creatinine 1.6, 1.8, means nothing. You have to calculate the EGFR, creatinine of 1.5 does not mean the same EGFR for a 30-year-old, 60-year-old, 80-year-old male, female. So it's very easy to calculate. And also do an ACR, how frequently you have to do, it's impossible to remember this, this is available in the KDGO guidelines, free download, get it, just paste it in your clinic. If you see that, if, if you have GFR which is normal, just do it once a year, but then if the EGFR is going down or the ACR is going up, you should be doing three to four times in the year creatinine and ACR. Now management of DKD. The, the entire purpose of telling you this is, is this looks very simple, but I'm telling you, in, including me and some people sitting in the front row, we miss to diagnose CKD, which is so sad. Because if you pick up somebody with an EGFR of 55, ACR of 32, and you do these four pillars, you see my last slide, the amount of burden you will decrease in this person to progress into hemodialysis or end-stage kidney disease or cardiovascular death will be phenomenal. We don't do it, I don't know why. So if you want to prevent CKD, these are the three things. There has to be primary prevention, secondary prevention, and treatment of ESKD. 
Uh, I'm not a nephrologist, so don't ask me any questions on the right-hand side. I don't know how to manage, I don't know what is dialysis. Primary prevention, yes. All of us in this room should do glycemic control. The famous UKPDS trial, go and read. Majority of the benefits was in the retina and in the kidney. Read the advanced trial. Majority of the benefit in advanced trial was basically preventing nephropathy or preventing progression of nephropathy. So good glycemic control makes a difference. So first take home point, if you want to prevent kidney damage or uh, the development of